Hi, Phil here from Phil's Random Stuff. Today I'm going to talk about electric drum brakes on your off-road camper or caravan. Now, if you're like me and you do a hell of a lot of dirt roads on your holidays um, and often wonder what happens with all the dust ingress that gets into your electric drums, what's it doing to it, uh, you know, and what sort of wear does it cause? Um, today we're going to run through that and have a look at what's on my van here. These are Elko 12 inch electric drums, um, two ton axle, stub shafts on the things, uh, on the van. Um, and at the moment these brakes are past their point. They need to be replaced and, um, and overhauled. Now I have to do this every year after we do about, uh, we probably do about 2000 Ks of dirt roads a year. And towards the end of it, the brakes aren't working. So what happens when you're driving in the dirt, um, on dusty roads, I should say, uh, what's going on? So I guess if you often watch people with caravans or trailers with electric brakes driving down a dirt road and as they slow down, you'll see all the dirt drop out from behind the drum brake. Now that is actually due to the dust coming in through the bottom here. Um, it actually has a dirty great big vent on the front here to allow air to pass into here to cool it. That catches a lot of the dust and then the dust spends its whole time riding up this brake shoe. So that between the drum and the brake shoe, it actually pulls the dirt up and holds it there while you're turning pretty well. Um, now, the I should say, this is an off-road variant and to explain what the off-road variant of these things is, there is absolutely no difference between an off-road and an on-road variant drum besides the magnet. The magnet has a plastic insert in it. These are Elko magnets. This has had it. Um, I'll explain later. And this plastic insert stops it from wearing the, um, put that down there, the, um, the lever that it sits on. Now, if you have an on-road magnet, it actually has a steel insert where this sits. And it actually will flog out both parts, but mainly the part of the magnet and it'll um, end up jamming up and locking up your brake drums. Bit of a shit show, but you know, you've got to be aware of this when you buy a van and make sure it does have off-road magnets installed in it. There's, other than that, there is no difference in anything else. It's nothing special. Um, so what happens to your brake shoes after driving about 2,000 k's of dirt roads is the shoe starts to groove up due to the dust running up over the shoe and that actually stops the shoe from gripping whatsoever there is just no surface area on this shoe you can see it's not even shiny anymore if you go around and have a look at the front one you can see that this is the only part of the shoe that's doing any braking whatsoever so when i put these shoes in new um the well actually it was a whole backing plate because if anyone who's gone down the lines of Repairing these things, it's actually cheaper to put a whole new backing plate in with a, they come with a new magnet, because um, individual parts are stupid. I think the magnet's about 70 bucks and between 70 and 140 bucks for the shoes uh, in Elko parts. So it's not even worth the effort. You may as well go um, and buy a new backing plate for about 180, 170 dollars from Elko. I think they are now, um, don't quote me on that. Uh, so you'll start off your trip like I do. The Topro Elite that we have in the car has got a dial between one and 10 and at three, the brakes will break fine. It'll pull um, the van up nicely. By the end of the trip, I'm back up around seven to eight to get any braking. Now, my van weighs in at around about 1500 kilos 1800 kilos maximum is its maximum capacity so we sit around the 1500 kilo mark um and so which obviously isn't that heavy and they said the brakes just don't work now this is a combination of several things obviously this being tightly had it this there's plenty of meat left in this shoe but there's nothing you can do with that at all uh the magnets now the magnets are an interesting thing. If you ever got your brake shoes or brake drums apart, a um, few things to look at is how flat your magnet is. Your magnet needs to be flat. This magnet, as you can see, there's a burrs on the end of it and it's not square at all. Uh, the other thing, 
which really annoys me about these Elko magnets is I try and sit this up here and do it one handed. I thought I'd just drop this in to show a bit better about what I mean about this nylon insert being loose. As you can see, the magnet moves backwards and forwards, but the nylon or hard plastic insert, whatever you want to call it, is actually let go from the magnet. So just check that when you're checking your brakes. Okay, back to the, the video. The center of them can actually come loose and the and cause the magnet to actually rock around in on the thing. So this actual plastic insert comes loose and it moves backwards and forwards and that'll actually break away eventually and the magnet will, will go like this and rip the wires off and jam up the brake shoe. So that is a bit of a subtle part. Another important thing to know is how do you know when these things are worn? They have these indicator holes. Once you can't see those indicator holes anymore, the magnet's worn out. The next thing, which is the biggest thing that stops these magnets from working efficiently, you might have, you might test, jack up your van and check that, you know, one side does about a turn and it locks up. The other side, doesn't matter what you do to adjust it, does three turns or it doesn't quite lock up and it just drags really tightly. And that's caused by these holes in the epoxy air bubbles. This stops reduces the surface area that the magnet has to grip on. It's not the mag it's not the magnetic part that causes it to break. It's the friction between the face of the brake drum and the magnet that allows it to swing up and up and push the brake shoes out. So with less surface area, this is worn badly so this one doesn't work, but with all these air bubbles in here, it actually affects how well this sucks itself basically to the front of the brake drum. So that's something to be aware of. If you pull your magnets out and they've got air bubbles like this in it, it's not gonna be as effective as one with no air bubbles in it at all. So this magnet is totally toast. Um, it's worn really crooked. Uh, <laughs> so it's got a due to replacement. Now, going on to the brake drums. These have been machined. This is uh, This will be the third time they're machined. They actually don't survive too badly. The Elko ones are good. You can actually machine this surface down because uh, the studs are recessed quite far into the, um, the the drum itself. So that's no problem. And the shoe actually has a fair bit of grooving on it. You could probably run this again if you weren't too fussy. Um, but while you've got them off, you may as well take it down to your local brake place and just get them skimmed up if you wish. Uh, because they are around about the two, the 12 inch ones are quite expensive and two ton. I think they're around about the 250 mark to purchase um, on that scheme of things. So I'm at the point I'm over fixing these bloody things. I do it every year. Um, you know, new set of shoes, uh, new magnet, or normally new backing plate. Um, I've actually come across these Menutech off road magnets for a 12 inch drums. Now, they're $30 each, not 70 bucks each, so you can buy two for the price of one. They do have a slightly smaller plastic insert, but they seem to go all right. They last just as long, not quite as long as the Elko ones, but at $30, I don't mind changing them out. The only difference is, is this slot in here is slightly smaller, um, I should say slightly bigger in width across from here to here than the Elko ones. And what I do is um, the lever that they sit on needs to be built up just to run a beta weld here on the either side of it and file it smooth and they fit there nicely. Otherwise they rock around too much if you've got this back at the standard Elko width. Um, one thing to note with these things, with the magnets sitting on them, they do wear out. So you've got to replace these too. They'll get all rounded on the edge. Uh, they'll get thin. Um, they'll wear with a bit of a taper. And the magnet will flop around even more, which makes the magnet wear out even faster. You can see that dip in that one there where the magnet's been sitting. So, you know, I've actually built this up and ground it a bit. Um, again, I was going to put another set of these in here um, and just run the brake drums for this trip, but yeah, I've had enough. So 
I'm going to go down the lines of converting to um, electric over hydraulic disc for um, the fun of it, the experience, and see if it actually is any better. All right, there'll be another video coming out on this shortly, so uh, stay tuned and enjoy. Okay, catches.